Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. So Grok 4 dropped recently, and honestly, it's a pretty decent model overall. Don't get me wrong, it excels in certain areas, but when it comes to standard tool integration, it falls short. You know how it struggles with platforms like Cursor, Klein, and other popular AI coding assistants? Well, there's this fresh tool specifically designed to harness Grok's coding potential Instagram. It's called Grok Kai. What makes it special is that it's tailor-made for Grok, so the system prompts and tool integration actually work smoothly, transforming Grok into a genuinely capable coding companion. Well, there's this fresh tool specifically designed to harness Grok's coding potential Instagram. It's called Grok Kai. What makes it special is that it's tailor-made for Grok, so the system prompts and tool integration actually work smoothly, transforming Grok into a genuinely capable coding companion. The functionality mirrors what you'd expect from Cloud Code or Gemini CLI, except this is exclusively crafted for Grok's architecture. Being purpose-built for Grok specifically really shows that the performance improvement is quite noticeable compared to generic implementations. You can handle file operations viewing, creating, editing plus run shell commands just by chatting naturally with it. The smart part is how it automatically selects the appropriate tools based on what you're asking for, all wrapped in this gorgeous terminal interface powered by Ink. If you're into automation, you can easily plug it into your GitHub actions and existing workflows. There's even a non-interactive mode available, which is perfect when you want to incorporate it into your custom scripts or automated processes without manual intervention. The customization options are pretty flexible too. You can set up specific rules and personalize the circle that says tailor its behavior to your preferences. One downside though is the lack of custom slash commands currently, which would be a nice addition for power users. Here's something cool. The CLI isn't locked to just one model. You can easily switch between different models by specifying the base URL and model name, giving you the flexibility to use whichever AI model suits your current task best. All right, let me walk you through how this actually works in practice. Getting started is straightforward. Just run the standard npm install command. After installation, you'll need to set up your environment variable for the Grok API key. Simply export that environment variable with your Grok API credentials and you're ready to go. To avoid repeating this setup process every time you launch your terminal, you can make it permanent by navigating to the settings file in your home directory and adding your API key directly to the JSON configuration there. With everything configured, you can launch it using the simple grok command. Here's what the interface looks like in action. You'll notice it bears strong resemblance to tools like Cloud Code or Gemini CLI in terms of layout and functionality. There's this input area where you can type your request naturally, telling it exactly what you need accomplished. The interface also includes several slash commands available. Let me break down each one for you. Starting with CL help. This displays comprehensive information about all available features. What's particularly neat is that certain commands can be executed directly from the prompt, running actual terminal operations like touch, liz, pwd, and similar system commands right within the interface. Moving on to other slash commands, there's slay clear, which wipes the conversation context up to that point really useful for starting fresh when you've hit context limits. There's also a models command worth mentioning. When you type models and press enter, it presents all available model choices for selection. You can choose between Grok 3, Grok 4, and Grok 3 mini, depending on your specific needs and preferences for the current session. Most users will probably prefer Grok 4, given its superior performance compared to the alternatives. I believe it's actually set as the default option too. Beyond these, there's an exit command for when you want to close the application. Like I mentioned earlier, you can execute standard system commands creating files with touch, making directories, deleting items, and similar operations directly through the interface. It's a pretty handy feature. Let me demonstrate how it works in practice. The requests can be quite open-ended. For this demo, I'll use this Kingbench application and request that it adds a basic light theme implementation. You'll observe it immediately beginning to process and work on this task. The workflow mirrors Cloud Code's approach, requesting your approval before executing each step. You have the option to grant blanket approval for all actions in the session, which streamlines the process significantly, and the execution speed is impressively quick. The Grok API limitations have been improved recently, with better token-per-minute rates and other related constraints being addressed. 
While Grok 4 demonstrates solid coding capabilities, its tool integration has historically been problematic. This solution addresses those issues by incorporating optimized system prompts and fine-tuning the CLI specifically for Grok's architecture. All the tooling has been carefully optimized to work seamlessly, and you can see the results in just a moment. The task completion happens smoothly, and as you can observe, it has successfully finished the work with solid results. When we execute the application, you'll notice it performed the implementation flawlessly without encountering any problems. The implementation quality is excellent to you. The theming functionality operates perfectly without any glitches. Overall, the user experience has been outstanding. I haven't encountered any significant problems during my testing so far. I put it through my custom Agentic benchmark, still a work in progress with five test cases currently, and Grok CLI successfully handled two of them, which matches the performance of Gemini and QNS, crossing a respectable showing overall. That said, considering the cost factor, Grok's value proposition remains questionable. I wish Grok 4 were more compact and efficient, but Grok Kai does enhance its utility significantly compared to trying to use it with tools like Klein, where the integration is subpar. That's definitely a limitation worth noting. On the positive side, this CLI tool performs admirably, and if you prefer working with a different model, you can specify the base URL and model name either in configuration or as runtime parameters when launching it. That flexibility is genuinely useful. I found it interesting enough to share with you all because it's a solid tool despite some limitations. It's worth experimenting with to see whether it fits your workflow and meets your specific needs. I'm hoping XAI will eventually release their own official Grok CLI tool. My guess is they'll introduce it alongside the upcoming Grok code model whenever that gets released. All things considered, it's a pretty impressive piece of software. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this content. You can support the channel watching the entire video. Catch you in the next video. Take care.